All right. So let's get into the word of God today. Let's get into the word of God today. All right. Let's go get into the teaching. So today I'm talking about breaking the power of fear, breaking the power of fear, or breaking the fear of the, fi- of the future, breaking the fear of the future. Glory to God. One thing, so let me tell you a story. One thing I'd had to do, one thing I'd had to deal with in my life personally was the issue of fear. One thing I had to deal with was the issue of fear. And you know, for me, you know, I did not even realize that I was fearful. It, it took, you know, it took me to realize, I mean, I could get, I thought I was hesitant. I thought I used to procrastinate, but I couldn't put the word there that I was fearful. So what happened was that I did a test and I did a personal life evaluation test. And one of the key things I filled in the test was, was fear. Fear was the biggest thing. And it, all of a sudden it occurred to me, um, there's this light that is vibrating. Help me fix this so it doesn't distract me. Yeah. So it occurred to me that one of the biggest things that was holding me back from achieving the purpose of God in my life was fear. And the reason I'm saying so to you is that I wish I was an abnormally, but it's not for everyone. There are people who don't understand my voice. What is holding you back the most is fear. And I'll give you a practical example. So every year for the past three or four years, I've always said something like this. What, what have I said? I've always said something like, oh, this year I'm going to write my book and release my book. Then the year will go, I'll not release my book. I remember that I got so desperate. I, I did a bet with my friend, and I said, if I don't release my book, I will pay you this amount. That year went, my friend got the money, I still didn't release my book. So last year also, I said it again, I said, I'm going to release my book. And guess what? By December, the book wasn't ready. And in my mind, I'm also working on it. Because sometimes, when you're not careful, fear shows as procrastination. You will just think that you're trying to dot the T's, this and this, and the real truth is that you're afraid. Fear has taken over. Fear shows up procrastination. So, eventually, um, around the 27th of December, I mean, it was obvious the book would not come out to me. My assistant, my effective assistant. But the thing is that I had the books, I had the manuscript of the books in my emails because I'd worked on some of the books. So, she just came to me and after one Sunday service, she said, Sir, this is your book. And she gave me a physical copy of the book. I said, What? He said, yeah, I, I knew I wanted to write a book. I didn't know why he couldn't write it. He said, I went, I got the manuscript, read it, edited it, printed it, and I brought you the book. <sighs> wow. And all of a sudden, I asked myself, what's holding me back? It was just fear. Then, you know, she told me something. That was on Sunday morning when I came to church. By Sunday, she texted me. He said, just to let you know, we displayed all the books. We did 1,000 copies just for trial. We displayed all the books. And just to let you know, all the books, were, someone came and paid for all the 1,000 books. And the person gave us five million naira and paid for all the 1,000 books. I said, wow. See, let me say something to you. I will, you will never know except to try. And what happened to me was this. Let me tell you why I was afraid. I was afraid that, mm, you know, this thing, can, uh, it can be better. This can be better. This can be better. But the truth is that you will never, oh wow, you can never improve what you have not started. You can never improve what you have not started. And some of you are here. You're afraid of getting married. You're afraid of dating. You're afraid of men. You're afraid of starting the business. You will never improve until you start. Fear is a big thing. It's a big thing. A lot of you, a lot of you, you've been talking about, I'm going to start this business. I'm going to release my music. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. The question is that you've said it for the past two or three years. Now you are in January of a new year. You said you would do it in January. Are you going to do it? Would this be the year you would do it? Fear is real. Fear is so real. Let's read the scripture, Judges chapter 7. And in this teaching, one of the things you're going to learn is this. How to break the power of fear. How to break the power of fear. Judges chapter 7 in verse 1. Are you ready with me? No, that's so weak. Are you ready with me? Yeah. All right. So the Bible says, And Jerubbabel was Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the wall of Herod, so that the hosts of Midianites were on the north side of them. By the hill of Moron in the valley. Verse 2. The Bible says, And the Lord said to Gideon, The people that with you are too many for me to give you the to give the Midianites into your hands. I, 
see, let me tell you something. Nobody talks like God. How can you be going for a war and someone says there are too many and the person you are going to fight is bigger than you? He says this, and the people that are with you are too many to give the mediant into your hands. Let Israel vaunt, flaunt themselves, saying, my hand has saved me. Can I say something here quickly? This is not my message, but let me divert. Sometimes what you call disability is a messy gap. Sometimes the reason why you're not able, the reason why God doesn't have you to have it together is because he's looking for a way to step in. When you have all the help, there will be no way God can help you. So maybe you're looking for help and all the people you know have been transferred. That's a messy gap. Don't see yourself at disadvantage. See yourself as someone that God can help. And the reason why is this. It says, I don't want Israel to be able to flaunt that I did it. God, listen to me. There's a reason why God, rem oh wow, can, can you receive this? Have a look up here. Let me tell the practical story. The people, whoever is controlling the light, you are distracting me and please stop it. The people, I want you to listen to this. The people that will bless you the most will be the people you never thought will bless you. The people you thought will bless you, one way or the other, either they thought about it or they didn't think, they will find a way to disappoint you. That's what I found about our life. I'm a pastor, I've done this for a long time. You will think that when something happens, this and this person will stand. They will just fold their hands and be looking. And from nowhere, it will be one young boy that God will raise. When it was time for Goliath to be killed, do you know the soldiers of Israel were for Goliath? Nobody had the intelligence to get up. Because if a soldier had won, they would have said it was because he was training military. So God looked for a shepherd boy that had no military what history or intelligence. The reason why is that God knows how to use basket to disgrace buckets. You know what I'm saying this to you? Many of you, you keep looking at who God is not going to use. And that's why you can't receive help. Because you are thinking my help will come from here. And God says, Living say, that is not the person. I will raise up my own person in his own time. You know why God does that? God does it to humble you. Because, I mean, one guy gave a testimony here some weeks ago. He said, he got a funding. He said, but you must remember that I'm very influential. I know people and I know institutions. I went everywhere. He said, everybody that I know practically turned me down. He said, from nowhere, it's for some Asia that someone found me on the internet and funded me. And the reason I'm saying that to you is this. Let me say why I'm saying that to you. If because the people close to you did not help you, you're coming to a conclusion you cannot be helped. It's called error. You have just shortchanged yourself. You, when the people around you refuse to help, say that, wow, the people around me refuse to help so that God can raise me help outside my influence so that all the glory can be to him. Are, are you hearing me? But most of you, once people are not around you, once the people around you are not available to help, you become very discouraged, very fatigued, very angry. You're like, what is this? My brother, don't think like that. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. When Jesus was going to feed the 5,000, who did he get food from? A young child's lunch. Question, were there not people in that place that were millionaires? So controlling the power, breaking the power of fear. So one of the things you have to learn is this. One of the things you have to learn, one of the biggest reasons why people do not enter their promised land why people do not see the fulfillment of God's promise in their life, why people don't do big things is fear. Fear is what is the number one reason why people don't do big things in their life. Fear makes you settle for less. What does settle for less mean? Just many people are, be, many people are in the wrong marriage because of fear. They settle for less. Some people went for the wrong project because they settled for you. Look at yourself, and something tells you you can do this project and put in your mind. And but as soon as fear step inside, you settle for less. Fear 
fear makes people settle for less the second thing that fear does is this the second thing that fear so fear paralyzes imagination and initiatives when people are afraid you know what happens to them when people are afraid fear does not allow you see a way out when people are afraid you know what they normally say they always say it's not possible it can't be done this and this the reason why is that they are so afraid of failure that they don't want to try again let me give an example as a pastor i hear this often he said pastor i've tried everything but nothing's working i said that's fine you know what i do i'll just take paper and biro i say take write everything you have tried you know what i've noticed nobody writes up to six i said excuse me how can everything be six and you have tried everything the reason why you say you have tried everything is this you've tried few things and they failed and you have projected the failure into the future so someone say all men are the same ah how many are the same right how many you have dated <laughs> you've just dated five i'm even i'm exaggerating though know. you've just dated five oh and you say all the men the billions of the men in the world are the same what has happened to you you know and what i'm saying is this you, what happens you take the failure of something and you take it and you project it into the future and you do not realize on its own that that is fear the pastor i never succeed in business how many business have you done have not succeeded two i was reading a story about the person that built the tallest building in dubai but um, i think it's but but is it but khalifa is but khalifa and they said the guy had a failed cake business moved to the middle east to go into construction and they built it the reason why is that in christ there's no failure everything which we designed for your glory oh wow <laughs> you did um, did you receive that in christ there's no failure all things always work if you believe it all things always work together for our good glory to god i said glory to god fear won't fear won't allow you to see a way out you say um i, I can't you say, i can't raise the money i can't get married i can't buy the house i can't get the approval i can't do this fear won't allow you to see the way out the reason why is that fear won't allow you to see your spiritual resources and i'll give an example look at the story of gehazi look at the story of gehazi and who and 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 elisha the bible says they came to attack elisha when they came to attack elisha guess what happened elisha said to gehazi he said they that with us are more than they that with them why couldn't gehazi see those that were him he couldn't see because he was afraid once you're afraid you step down what you see glory to god once you're afraid you step down what you see fear limits what you see you will not be able to see your resources you will not be able to see your spiritual resources because fear is going to limit what you see see if you want to see father step up your faith i love what the bible says it said we walk by faith not by sight that means that faith is sight he says we walk by faith and not by what sight so he, faith is sight if faith is sight then fear is sight because faith and fear are forces on the opposite direction the hands i couldn't see he couldn't see a way out and he couldn't see a way out because there is fear the reason why you can see how you're going to get married how you can have the child how you can get the job how you can get the finances how you can build the company in the u.s how you can do the contract in qatar is because there's fear within your heart and fear blocks you from seeing some of you are here you want to get married but your fear is blocking you some of you want to start a business your fear is blocking you some of you want to move forward your fear is blocking you it's time to take all of the fear some of you are called to ministry but your fear is blocking you fear won't allow you to see spiritual resources oh wow huh. fear breeds negative expectation i don't know if you heard me fear does what breeds negative expectation you just expect the worst when you're in fear you someone say how did i let me let me backtrack someone says how do i know i'm in fear one of the ways you will know you're in fear is this you will expect the worst you'll go to a company to apply for a paper and they'll come back and say sorry madam you came too late and you'll say something like 
um, I knew that you would not take me. And the reason why is that you came there in fear. One lady, I'm not sure if it was, if it was um, in a live session or something like that. I can't remember what happened, but right more recently. One lady says, she, I think it was in the fourth service. She said, I just have a challenge. People never respond to me. People never do this and this and that. He said, even when you called me, I was surprised. Because although I raised up my hands, I told myself that you will not call me. Because I'm never picked. I said, and she was explaining the problem she had. I said, that's the problem. The problem that you have filled your mind with that kind of mentality and expectation. That you don't get picked. So much so that when you were picked, you know what she did? Me? 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 You know, she began to behave in a way that's not appropriate to someone that should be picked. So if I was not patient with her, I could have said, move the mic to the next person. And that's what fear does. What fear does is that he breathes, you are, breath, you are breathing negative expectation. And it's so negative, you begin to act in line with it. And because you act in line with it, you will not have negative outcomes. And I'm saying, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Some of you, let me just be hard, let me just calm down. Uh, because I want to run, but let me calm down. Some of you, honestly, you want to get married, but you're afraid you're not married. Or you're afraid you married the wrong person. So when you enter, when you see someone in a relationship, two things you do. Either you are too much or you are not doing enough. And those two things is a sign of fear. What then may you do too much? So you date this guy or this girl, you are all over, all over, all over, all over until you suffocate them with love. And instead of them, they see that you love them. They think that there's something wrong with you. They should pull away. Then there's some other people that they enter the relationship because of fear. They don't want to give in a lot because they're like, I don't, I don't know if he will leave or not. Or if she will leave or not. So I just want to put in small so that if he or she leaves, I can just walk away. And you eventually, and the other person thinks you're not committed because he or she does not realize you are dealing with fear. And your fear is holding you back from giving your best to the relationship. When the relationship crashes, you say, I need to crash because of negative expectation that has affected you. You didn't understand that you were the prophet of your destiny. Praise God. Have you not noticed the exam you don't prepare for the most is where you forget to buy room? I'm telling you, your fear begins to work on you. They, you, you didn't prepare or they just said bring four figure table, bring a calculator, bring bio. You got there, you've missed everything. Because your fear is working on you. Glory to God. I say glory to God. When you face your fear, your fear diminishes and recedes. Let, let, I don't know if you heard that. Once you face your fear, your fear diminishes and what? Recedes. If you back, back up for your fear, your fear grows and dominates you. And this, let me tell you something. This is, a, everybody look up here. This is the power of having results. Can I say something? Please look up. Whatever you do in your life, whatever you do in your life, you must have one testimony that God did something for you. You know why? If you don't have that testimony that God did this thing for me, even though you say you have faith or you come to church, you will never believe in your deep innermost being that God can do something. Everybody needs a reference point. Everybody needs what? A reference point. And I will tell you what I mean. <sighs> what is a reference point? If someone describes a certain dress and they say this dress is 3x square, what dress is 3x square? You have no mental picture. You know why? You have never seen it before. So when I say, oh, I bought a dress 3x square, nothing will cost you your mind. But if I told you I bought boxers, what will cost you your mind? You, pictures will cost you your mind because you've seen it before. It's difficult to imagine what you have never seen. Are you getting me? So how does this work? I will tell you my personal story. In my life, some things shaped my spiritual conviction. Some, people, some things turned me to who I am, and I know them. Number one, when I was younger, my brother was in boarding school. A prophet told my mom, the prophet had not spoken to my for three or four years. The prophet, there's no telephone that time. 
sent his daughter to my mom. He said, anywhere your first son is, he's dying. Go and look for him. My brother was calling in another state. My mother took the car, went there. My brother had just been slashed with a, with a hammer, um, with, a, with a cutlass by the neck. He was dying. I learned without anybody telling me that the prophetic exists. That someone can know something without human information at all. So, when you say that, there's something that's fake, something that's fake, the reason why you think it's fake is because you have not seen it. I saw it as a child. This happened when I was about seven years old. Nobody told me. It was in front of me. The second thing that happened to me was this, and this is about healing. Something happened to my nose, and the blood vessel in my nose broke. So when I'm going like this, blood would drain out of my nose. I was already scheduled for, a doc, for, for what they call it, for a surgery in Luth. In fact, if you look at my nose area very well, it will get dark because of the allergic reactions. But I was scheduled for a surgery. Then all of a sudden, my mother's close friend went for the surgery, and they forgot cotton in her nose. She had discomfort. Then one day, she just sneezed. The cotton came out. When my mother heard, my mother said, nah, you will never do this because fear entered her heart. But she now said something that challenged me. He said, Shabir, you are the one that is born again, always praying. And pray to God to heal you now. I, he said, Shabir, you always pray. pray. Can't God heal you? I took it as a challenge. The day the bleeding stopped and the blood vessel corrected, I can't tell you. But till tomorrow, that doesn't happen again. So when you say that God does not heal, you cannot tell me that. Because I have a point of what? Reference. Let me say something to you. Eh? You will hear people post things like this on social media. I will be lying if I say God does not answer prayer. The reason, and when they post it, you will just like, mm, religious people. But the reason why they are saying that is that they are setting milestones in their life that they cannot deny that this is the hand of God. Are you hearing me? The, you know what I'm saying this? I'm saying this that until you confront your fear, you will never know what God can do. And until you have a testimony that I confronted my fear and this happened, you will never have energy for the next phase. Can I tell you something? You will do something you have never done before. Then you will see a miracle. Then you say, uh-huh, I got it. So this is how this thing works. I have a friend in Abuja. He told me, he said, I now know your secret. I said, what's my secret? He said, I know you walk by faith. He said, they needed 250 million. This was a, this was a organization that would do 50 million annually. He said, there was no way we would get it. He said, but you challenged me. He said, I went for it. He said, that year, our income shot. We hit 150 million. It occurred to me. He said that, I asked myself, I never thought this would happen. Then it occurred to me, if I can just step out in faith, I will not sink. You know the thing? As soon as that happened, I saw him begin to take bigger steps. Bigger steps. Bigger steps. How do you face your fear? You need to confront it first. The more, you, if you face your fear, your fear will recede and what? And back out. But if you don't confront your fear, your fear will grow and dominate your life. And how do you face it? Look for small area of your life and in your goal, do something. Just do something. Da. Do something. Da. Do something. Da. You are building confidence in the power of God. When it comes to the build thing, you will have built a lot. That was the reason why when Saul was trying to wear the armor for David, Saul said, let me protect you. Take my armor. David said, sir, you can't protect me. He said, number one, I'm not used to this armor. He said, but listen, sir, when I was in the back of the desert, a lion came with my hands. I destroyed it. A bear came. I killed it. A wolf came. I killed it. He said, the same way this happened. Why? Why did he get the confidence from? Oh, my. Will you receive this? The other soldiers were trained, but they have never won battle before. Oh, wow. This is the difference between a mechanic engineer in school and a mechanic in town. One is theory, one is practical. Many of the mechanic engineers here, if my car breaks down, I can't call you. Because you will identify this calibrator, this is um, this, then fix it, you can't fix it. The reason why is that there is a knowledge that comes from doing. It, it, and this is the problem with born again. Born again will carry the Bible. Uh, leave, by, leave, leave that one. Though. You will carry the Bible end time to practical and say, Lord, this is what you said. Lord, this is what you said. When you now have result, you now say, aha, uh -huh. God is faithful. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. 
You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> you know, um, there was a guy, I want to see one guy, he's a prayer warrior. Ah, something that someone had got into trouble, real trouble with the government. He said to me, he said, son, he said, we will pray and it will come out of it. I said, how are we sure? Ah. He said, we know what to call God that makes him have mercy. Ah, ah. <laughs> there are dimensions. He said, we know what to call it. Ah. He said, just watch. He said, once I prostrate now, I'll be here for three days. Once I get up, it's out of it. Because I will not get up until I secure his deliverance. This thing is deeper than what you think, oh. <laughs> this thing is deeper than what you think. And it's not theory. So this is, I, I don't know if God will do it. Me, I can never in my life say God is not faithful. I've seen too much. Not coincidence, oh. So maybe, maybe, maybe. Mm, I've seen too much. Even the people that are close to me have seen too much to say that God is not faithful. And the reason I'm saying so is that this way it comes to, until you get to that point and be like, you know what, I'm desperate for my fist. You must be desperate for your fists because once the fist open, everything will open. It's like business people, if you make your first 10 million, that's it all. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You, once you make the first big money, that's it all. The boldness you will have, what you lack is that boldness. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. So let's conclude this. What do you do when you're afraid? What do you do when you're afraid? So listen to this. Anytime you're afraid, you need the word. What do you do? Someone says, well, um, I'm afraid that this year will not turn out the way I planned it to. I planned for it to be. Anytime you're afraid, you need the word. Someone says, I'm afraid I will have a divorce. Anytime you're afraid, you need the word. Someone says, I'm afraid I will not get the funding. Anytime you're afraid, you need the word. Unfortunately, when most people are afraid, they pray. But their prayer does not work because prayer works by faith. So when you pray in fear, the fear cancels out your prayer. Once you are afraid, the first thing you need is what? The word. Why? Once the because faith coming by hearing the word and hearing what faith coming by hearing and what hearing the word of God. So what happens? Every time I hear the word, faith walks in. When faith walks in, fear steps out. Can I get a chair? Yeah. Shall I go come? Sit. Fear sits. Fear sits. This is you. Stand up. This is your life. At the church there. So guess what? Fear is sitting. So when you are in fear, Father, let fear go. It doesn't go that way. How does God take out fear? Faith come. When faith comes, sit. Knock him out. Faith is going to knock him out. That's what happens. Faith will knock him out. The problem is that you have fear reigning in your life, but you are praying for it to go. Fear does not respond to prayer. You fit it out. You fit out the fear. How do you fit out the fear? You fit out the fear by hearing the word. How does fear, faith come? Faith coming by hearing. And hearing by what? By the word of God. How does fear leave? Fear leaves by faith coming. How does faith come? Faith coming by hearing. And hearing the word of God. So the question is this. Get up now. What area is fear reigning as a king in your life? Reign, 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 reign. What area is fear in it? Oh, oh, Father, remove the fear. Is it going to go? You have the fear of marriage. You have the fear of failure. You have the fear of shame. You have the fear of disease. You have the fear of death. Not having a child. It's not going to go. What are you going to do? We're going to get the word. Because as we get the word, what happens? Faith. Once faith walks in, fear walks out. Once what? Faith walks in, what happens? Fear walks out. Say, once faith walks in, fear walks out. So when you, when you feel afraid, what do you go for? What do you go for? Say, when I feel afraid, I go for the word. Thank you. Thank you. In chemistry, it's called the law of displacement. You know the law of displacement? Once faith walks in, 
And this is the reason why people's prayers are never answered. Because they're praying from a place of fear. Oh God, oh God, see what the doctor said. See, no, 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 before you pray, let faith walk in. Once faith walks in, the fear has to go. Let, once faith walks in, the fear has to go. Let faith walks in, the fear has to go. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So when you're afraid, you need the word. But not just the word, this is how you release faith. You need more meditation of the word. Why? Why? Watch this now. Because the meditation of the word releases revelation. And oh wow, revelation. Once almost, oh my shante come and brande caprende masanga latega limongum ronde mamberomane brande has on the leader. Hey, my co shata. Will you receive this? I, I can hear you. Will you receive this uh, at the back? Can I hear you, please? All right. Most times, when people have fear, is because there's a gap they can't fix in their mind. Yes or no? Let me give an example. So the reason why you're afraid you will not do the contract is because you cannot figure out how you can get two million dollars. The reason why you're afraid you'll not get married is because you can't figure out who will marry you at the age of 44. The reason why you think you can have a child is because the doctor said your fallopian tubes are blocked. The reason why you think this will be a bad year is because they've given you all these economic indices to say this year will be horrible. That is the reason why. So when people have fear, there's always what? A gap. There's a gap. Well, this is what I want. This is where I am. I don't know how to achieve this. Let, let, me, let me give you in a simple way. The only person afraid to drive is the one that cannot drive. Yes or no? Why? Because mentally, he, have you seen a church before? He will hold the steering, then he'll be pressing. He's looking at the shift gear. He's wondering, how do you press your leg, move the gear, and drive? Three of them at the same time. Because every time he wants to do that, he will look down, then look at the gear, and do this. The reason why is that because there's a gap in his mind. So the gap makes him afraid. Every time there's a gap, fear reigns. So what revelation does is this, when you meditate in the word, revelation is light. Ah, yeah, bo shate kamanda basa. Say we are coming up, say we are coming up, we're coming up. Revelation is light. What you cannot see naturally that shows you the gap, revelation shows you. That's what the Bible says, the entrance of your word give it light. He says we walk by faith and not by sight oh my god are you here somebody if you look at me right now i'm wearing a jacket and a tie that's true but if you look at me through an x-ray you will not see my jacket and suit you will see something else revelation is looking through another dimension you are looking at it through the third dimension the physical dimension through what it said but revelation is saying step up what you're thinking step up so the doctor looks at your organ and says your fallopian tube is blocked but revelation says that blessed is the fruit of your body oh my shut up oh my god I, I don't know if you can hear me oh my you're looking at the year from the economic budget and he said this year will be very tight revelation says that when men say there's a casting down we will say there's a lifting up oh my god the angel came to mary he said mary you have a child knowledge said how can i have a child since i know no man revelation says the power of the holy ghost shall oh my shot he said the power of the holy ghost shall overshadow you oh glory to god revelation is looking at a higher oh my i'm stirred by the spirit of god i'm sorry if i don't see the way you see i'm seeing from a level of faith he says that we walk by faith not by sight oh somebody shout i receive it somebody shout i receive it somebody shout i receive it revelation is looking from the 4d he's look at him and say it's time to leave the 3d look at him and say it's time to leave 3d let's move to 4d that's revelation so if you look at me and say pastor you're wearing a suit a tie a pair of shoes you're correct but if you look at me through the extra machine and you say pastor 
I can't see your suit. I can't see your shirt. All I see are lungs, livers, kidneys. Who is lying? Who is lying? Nobody. Someone is just living with a superior lens. So when, when, when the doctor says to you, I'm sorry you can't carry a child, the doctor is not lying. That is the lens is looking at. When they say that this will be a tough year for you, they are not lying. That's the lens you look at. But I'm walking by the rays of revelation. He said, I shut up my heart. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. I am to go for the Kahaya. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anoints my head with oil. My head with oil. My head with oil. And my cup. Run it over in 2024. Your cup is running over. Oh, Pashata Kabaya, because we are walking by revelation. We are walking about your cover. I'm hearing something. You are moving from limited options to multiple options. Anyway, your options have been limited. You are moving from limited option to multiple options because your cup is running over. Lift up your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Libo Rabande, Bereshende Kurabatada, Hesipo Rabade, Lekebo Numbro Sate, Sikebo Rata, Bandolo Kobona Minataya. Amen. Amen. We are now moving. Listen to me. Someone says, How do I get revelation? Revelation comes with true what encounters. My God. Oh Lord, help me. That's why we're going to wine press. Because wine press is a place of revelation. Wine press is about God helping me to think on the 4D. I'm tired of 3D. I want to move to what? 4D. Look at him and say, I'm tired of 3D. I want to move to 4D. Three D says that you can have a child, but what you believe is what you become. So if you believe three D, then you can't have a child. But you can step it up a little and move to four D. What does four D says? There shall none be barren amongst you. So my report changes. Oh glory to God. Three D says that darkness will cover everywhere. What does four D says? When men say there's a casting down, I will say there's what a lifting up. I would say there's a one, a lifting up. 3D says that you have no connection, you have no support. 4D says that he's my strength, he's my help, he's my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He says, if God be for us, who shall be against us? Look at him and say, I've moved to 4D. glory to God I said glory to God I said glory to God watch this now every time you see someone that should be afraid because of what they heard what they saw or what they are going through and they are not afraid is because they have revelation there's something they know someone says how do you know this the disciples came to Jesus Christ. He said, the, sh- the, water, the, sh- the water is pointing to the ship. And Jesus was sleeping in the water. And they would say, Master, don't you care we perish? 3D says, we're going to perish. When Jesus Christ got up, Jesus Christ said, Oh, yea, of little faith. Oh, wow. Can, I, can you give me one minute to break that down? Will you receive it? Why did, when he said, Oh, you're of little faith, I was like, Jesus, what are you talking about? The water is pointing to the ship. What they have little faith. Then I backed up. In the verses before, Jesus had told them, let us go to the other side. Faith came by hearing. What does that mean? No matter how you do it, we will end up 
on the other side because God's word cannot fail forever oh Lord your word is settled either the water was beaten into the sheep or the sheep was entering water God had spoken and nothing could stop it he had said let us go over to the other side I refuse to worry about the waves I refuse to worry about the wind I'm holding on to what God has said so when they woke him up he said why are you so fearful oh yea of little faith meaning little faith consider evidences around us real faith says God has spoken I sleep in it what they should have done was this when they saw just Christ sleeping they should have gotten their mattress and said let's all sleep together glory to God when the storm is raging this year oh my god just get your mattress say we settled it in white press oh glory to god oh glory to god oh we settled it so devil no shaking i'm going to sleep if satan says i no go agree you also say we agree for nobody glory to god look at him and say we grieve for nobody this white press it's your white press this convention it's your white press god will send you a word a word for your life a word for your business a word for your health in the name of jesus ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 this is the power of revelation this is the power of revelation see when God says something what happens human beings talk and that's where he ends that's not how God talks when God says something you become what he says because the word goes as spirit the Bible says in verse 2 let's read one together and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me did you hear that so when we speak about favor we are not just teaching something the spirit of favor enters into you glory to god he said the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet my business was wobbling my health was wobbling but when the word was spoken the spirit entered into me and all of a sudden what was bubbling by what was bubbling received strength what was bubbling received strength Shout, I receive it. Oh my God, my God. This wine press, all you need is a word from heaven. I know you want the pastor to touch you, but more than that is a word from heaven. A word that will change your life, that will change your health, that will give you direction, that will give you hope, that will give you assurance, and that word will find you. If you believe in tongue, that you big amen. Say grace, say grace, say grace, say this is my story. I want you to pray. Lord, grant me a word encounter this wine press. Go ahead and pray, everybody. Stand on your feet anywhere you are. Oh, Shabaya. Oh, Rabataya. Stand on your feet, everybody, and pray. Grant me a word encounter this white press. 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 Speak directly to me, O Lord. Speak directly to me, O Lord. I've moved to the fourth dimension, 40. In Jesus' name we pray. This wine press, God is intentional about you. And God will send you a word. And as you speak the word, the spirit will enter into you. The very thing you prayed for, you become your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive what encounters. Receive what encounters what that will change your lives in the name of jesus praise god did you get it 
Did you receive it? If you did say I received it. Praise God. God bless you. you can have your seat. Glory! I don't know about you, but my God, you can tell I'm in, I'm in wine press already. I'm not here. I'm in wine press already, my God. I'm there, 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 there. God is so intentional about me. My God, my time has come, my turn has come, my season has come. Praise God. Hallelujah.